Hello, everybody. Welcome to Albion Obsessed, the new look Albion Obsessed, uh, I will say. Um, gutted we don't have Toby with us anymore, uh, but I'm sure you'll see him pop on uh, from time to time. Um, as a guest, like we've got these two guys um, to the side of me, uh, if you'd like to introduce yourselves first of all, um, we'll start with Chloe. Uh, hi, I'm Chloe. Um... I'm a Brighton um, fan, been a Brighton fan for like 10 years. So. There you go. That's good um, enough. About the same, except my name's not Chloe. I'm Kurt. <laughs> um, yeah, I was actually quite late into football, admittedly. Um, and uh, Brighton are the best team in the world, clearly. Obviously. Well, there you go. It's so always... Yeah. Uh, never a bad time to start, um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess you started supporting us at the right time because all we've done is go yeah, up. So, much. Um, mm -hmm. as I said to you guys just before we started recording, um, I do have three questions to ask you both. Um, Curtis, I'll start with you. Um, okay. What is the your favourite Albion goal you've ever seen whilst at the stadium? Uh I've got to admit something, I've never actually seen a game. Okay, live. that's fine. Yeah. Okay, we'll change the question. What yeah. is the best goal you've seen Ooh. altogether? That's a good uh, good question. You know, the, the recent Enoch goal might be a favourite of mine. Uh, I've got to say that was fantastic. But it might be the um, Ellie Razor cartwheel kick. I thought it was pretty... Pretty great. Yeah, that was that was pretty special. Yeah. That's got to be up there with one of my favourites that I've seen. Definitely. Um, who is your favourite Albion player of all time? Oh, Glenn Murray. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, yeah I, I love that man. Yeah, good answer. Very mm -hmm. good answer. Um, and what is your go-to Albion shirt, if you have any? Oh. Uh, mm. Or if you don't. No, I what's like your favorite show the last season with the with the collar and stuff. I I like that one quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, that caused quite a little a, a little bit of uh, controversy. I, I when it don't came know out. why I liked it. It was quite classic looking, like old yeah, I, I I really liked it. Um, mm. and it was nice to change it up from uh, obviously going back to the pinstripes that we had back in '83. So, Definitely. yeah. Um, so Chloe, we'll ask you the same. Favorite Albion goal you've seen at any stadium? Because I know you go to away days a lot. Um, it might just be because it's fresh in my mind, but um, Neil Malpays against Crystal Palace. Oh yeah, that's Selhurst a good, this season, good shout. That was it. Not only was it a brilliant goal, it was just last minute equaliser when we thought we weren't going to get anything and it was just so cool being there the atmosphere just it was incredible basically the whole experience yeah. surrounded the goal as well as the actual finish yeah me and toby streamed that one um and i don't know if you guys have seen the clip but i'm just there head in hand so i'm thinking i'm yeah, not I gonna get it. any mm. not gonna get anything from this um and then chaos um yeah that's great uh, but yeah, I can only imagine what it was like at the ground. Um, that would have been absolutely yeah, nuts. Yeah. Um, your favourite Albion player of all time? I'm going to go Neil Malpe. <laughs> How did I, I know? To. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and your go-to Albion shirt for a match day? I generally just go with um, the one from that season and I just basically wear home or away based on what's in the wash and what's in my wardrobe so if you were forced to wear one albion shirt for the rest of your life what would it be um oh, that's a difficult question um <laughs> i do really like the away one this year the um ultra turquoise one yeah it's really that, nice. that's nice yeah that's nice that is, is such a nice shirt and um it's the first one they've done a, the first away shirt they've that's been available in women's fit and okay. i prefer that fit to like men's fit and so yeah i might i'll probably go that one yeah uh good move from nike then um i i know that nike did a weird thing with the sizing this year where it was like slim fit um and 
I'm not slim at all. And I got a large and it fit like a small. Honestly, I had to send it back. Um, luckily, I got an extra large now, but it makes me feel a bit awful about myself. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, so obviously the big elephant in the room is the result yesterday, which was incredibly special. Um, Chloe, you said you were at the game. Uh, first of all, what was the atmosphere like uh, and how was it? Uh, I see on your shirt, teams like Brighton, you you pointed it yeah. out at the start. Um <laughs> What was it like to uh, obviously be there and silence Liverpool? Um, you say that we silence them, but honestly, they don't sing that much. They're really no. loud for you'll never walk alone. And then it, they might sing a few times, but we didn't yeah. silence them because they weren't I, singing. I heard yeah. Brighton um, fans more than Liverpool yeah. fans watching it at home. Yeah. So. It was I saw a lot of people. Consistent. Brighton yeah I saw a lot of people tweeting um that you know where's your famous atmosphere and stuff like this mm. um may maybe if we play them in a Champions League semi-final at some point we might get to see what it's like but they only turn up for Champions League games um just going in into the game really um straight off the bat Solly March um I just want to talk about him uh because for me when Kukurea came in I was really worried that he was going to be completely pushed out of the team, um, not have much to say and be shipped out. And for me, for, for a, obviously, you guys know how much Soddy March means to the club, scoring the goal to send us to the Premier League. Um, I was, yeah, really nervous, but he's fitting in in a more advanced role now. Um, Curtis, what do, you, what do you make of his sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Contributions. Uh, in he's, that area, yeah. I mean, he's just a great hand. He's, he's. He, I mean, he's multifaceted. He can play loads of different positions. He's just so handy, and he's he's quite dangerous as well. I think people underestimate him as a player, definitely. Um, and it's a shame there was no one to support him in the in that that opening shot there because I feel like you know that that could have been a nice quick opening goal, which would have been amazing. So, yeah, yeah. It certainly would have settled the nerves. Uh, a little Absolutely. bit quicker than what we had to wait for. Chloe, what mm -hmm. do you make of his um, performance yesterday and throughout the season? Yeah, I think I think he seems to be one of those players where you can never sort of count him out. He will always like sort of like when he started performing or when he started playing as a wing back. I had really sort of thought that his time at the club was up because I didn't think that he was that good. And I'll hold my hands up and say that I was completely wrong because he he was phenomenal last year. And I think this year, um, he's. I think he has played a couple of games at wing-back, isn't he? But um, he's been yeah. playing more advanced role as well. And I think he's just consistently proven himself, really. And I think he's a very important part of our team. I mean, I think he's got yeah. better under Potter as well, I would yeah, say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, I mean, Graham Potter is just versatility. He just bleeds versatility, doesn't he? He wants yeah. strikers to play centre-back and centre-backs to play in goal. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's been been a great appointment for Solly. Uh, obviously, having somebody who's going to just inject confidence into him and wherever he puts him, I, he's put him on the right against Arsenal. He, he's... You know, we all know he's he's played on the left throughout his career. Um, so yes, yeah, it's really good to see. Um and yeah, I, I hope he, he continues because obviously we, we are a little bit light up front um at the moment. Um not a hundred percent sure why more pay was dropped. Um whether I, <laughs> whether or not that's like a, a just a knock or a a rest. Um but then why would you rest players i don't know he might have been a bit bruised from leicester you know the whole penalty situation maybe they thought maybe but i felt so sorry for it is as well <laughs> yeah um, i don't know maybe i just felt that we went quite defensive like to try and catch liverpool on the counter attack um although yeah i feel like um a lot of our better chances yesterday came from pressing and that is something that malpe is good at so yeah, really for sure. Helped us, even though we obviously still got a decent result. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I think a lot of fans don't actually realise what Neil Morpé does off the ball, um, and just see him as someone that just misses sitters all the time. But actually, this season he's been 
probably one of our best players um, yeah. going mm-hmm. forwards. Um, he's uh, had probably quite a hectic uh, break uh, in pre-season, uh, a hectic end to last season. Obviously, um, he's he's got, I, I think it's a daughter. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's probably been a, a mad life change for him. But, yeah, I think we're seeing somebody who has a little bit less pressure on them now and uh, a bit more belief, uh, which is really lovely to see. Uh, but we'll talk about one guy who came in and filled the central attacking role um, quite nicely, I would say. Um, I actually tweeted something and it jinxed it. Uh, Leandro Trossard. Um, I tweeted saying, Tr- uh, Trossard looks really promising today, um, but the end product, questionable. <laughs> Five minutes later, he goes and scores. Um, so 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 well him. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Um, but yeah, uh, Curtis, what did you make of Trossard's uh, changed role through the middle. I love that man. He's just different gravy. He's so good. Like Leo, um, I always find he's a little bit inconsistent, right? He has like like three or four really good games, and he just shuts off for like another three or four games. Um, but he seems to be doing very well at the moment, and I couldn't be happier with that. Like he's quite quickly becoming one of my favourites, like in in that squad. Uh, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, he's just he's just always. He, he always does something really special in a game, yeah. and um, I always like to to see him play. So. I think we've always seen glimpses of what he can do, as you said. The Definitely. inconsistency mm-hmm. there is was, was slightly concerning, um, but I think after the Man City game, I think he's really got some serious confidence in there that he can he can go out against the best in the world and sit them down. Um, yeah. Yeah, we saw it against Ruben Diaz oh, he, he had, had him on toast um, <laughs> and then again yesterday against Andy Robertson who was horrifically out of position I've got to say yeah. um, mm-hmm. but Trossard you know span him and, and got the goal um, and opened him up again with something that was maybe a blade of grass offside uh, I'm oh, not, yeah. not 100% sure about that so close. <laughs> that would have been special um, yeah mm-hmm. Chloe what do you make of Trossard's contribution so far um, I think this season he seems to have, um, actually probably the end of last season as well, he seems to have stepped up a gear. Um, I've always rated him. I think he's probably one of our most underrated players because what he does offer is, is so good. Some, like sometimes he, you look at him and he's like, how is he not playing for a top team? Cause he's just, well, we are a top team, but yeah, <laughs> um, top 10, yeah. but, um, yeah, I think I think he's he's really good, and I also have realised um, he shops in my work, and whenever I see him, he scores the next game. Well, wow. okay. go go for I a Trossard hunt out. every week. <laughs> every just hang around, yeah. just hang around with him. Yeah, just check the CCTV constantly, and uh, yeah, and then just stalk him. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we will talk about a, a guy that not many people are wanting to talk about at the moment uh, but we'll talk football only uh eve basuma uh, obviously back in the side um i'm just going to remove trossard from the screen because we don't need to see him anymore um Aww. yeah so sorry uh basuma obviously back in the side after a few appearances on the bench uh came off again off the bench against leicester did he yeah. correct me if i'm wrong yes, yes he did um and yeah, a lot of fans are a little bit split as to whether he should be playing, shouldn't be playing. Um, we won't go into that, but obviously an amazing performance yesterday and clearly showing why we need him in the squad. Um, but yeah, um, if anything was to happen, we also have a player who can, I think, easily replace him. And that guy is just below me. Um, not you, Curtis, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but Enoch and Wepu, um, we'll just talk about that goal first of all. Pfft, what a strike against probably one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Um, Chloe, you were behind the goal. D- did you did you see that coming? Um, I'm, I've got to be honest, the view at Anfield isn't brilliant Shocking. when everyone's standing, there's not sort of much step up, but um. Yeah, so I didn't actually see who scored it. I just saw it go in and I, I knew it was a oh, good man. goal because <laughs> we didn't look like it was sort of out of nowhere, really. 
Um, so you just see Alison sort of scrambling and it hit the back of the net and it was like unbelievable. Wonderful. Was and you quite far back was, then? No, I was only in the second row. But what I thought was really? quite good after that goal that I did notice was um, our players all getting back to restart the match, like not happy to settle for a consolation goal or anything. We really yeah. wanted to get back into that game. And then obviously eventually we did, which I think yeah. is a really good attitude. To have. Really good thing to point out. Um, I think maybe three seasons ago under no four seasons ago now under Hewton, um, that would that have been four seasons ago. My God, Jesus I think Christ. so. I think we've had three seasons with Potter now. This is our third, is it? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's um, crazy. So yeah, going back probably three and a half seasons. I'll say that that might make it seem a little bit better, but yeah. Um, yeah, going back to the Hewton days, we probably would have been celebrating that goal like crazy, thinking, yeah, we scored against Liverpool. How good are we? But mm -hmm. as you say, like it's the mentality to get back and say, no, we, we can beat this team. We are as good as them. Uh, we're in the same league as them. So why can't we? It's At the end of the day, it's the old cliche. It's 11 against 11. Anything can happen. So, um, yeah, really good stuff. But talking about, obviously, if Basuma was to leave, even if he was to leave in a, a transfer window to a, a let me say, a, a bigger side, um, we have a guy who can replace him, uh, an incredible box-to-box -box midfielder, um, and he, he showed that yesterday, um, really tenacious in defence, um, and he can score a goal. Uh, that's that's two in two games now. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And what a header against Leicester. Yeah, um, he's quite good in the air as well, which yeah. I yeah. noticed. Mm -hmm. He's I guess huge. I he's like today. Six foot two or something crazy, and he's rapid. Um, so yeah. yeah, got love to see it. Love to see it. Um, just uh, this, uh, that was a nice segue actually, because talking about rapid, one guy who came back, Tarek Lamptey. He just rinses defenders left, right, and centre. <laughs> Graham Potter said that he took a bit of a kick to the ankle and a bit sore afterwards. Obviously, that's the kind of player that he is. He's just going to attract those sort of challenges. Um, but if we can keep him fit, obviously, Kukurea on one side, Lamptey on the other. How far can this team go, Curtis? I mean, you know, my my heart says, that we're going to win the league. Yeah, come on. Uh, but obviously, my, my head is, is like, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think we can finish in the top 10 and stay in the top Right, this season, I, I feel we we seem like a different side this season. It's how it feels to me, anyway. It feels like there's a lot more togetherness. Um, the team just seem a lot more cohesive together, you know. And um, just speaking of Tarek, just like I've been so excited just to see him come back. You know, it, I was waiting and waiting. I was like, when are they eventually gonna just throw him in? Um, and we saw him, was he at Leicester? Did he play Leicester? No? Uh, he had a few minutes against Leicester, did he not? I'm not sure. Well, that but might be wrong. Or he, like no, game... he came against Man City. Man City. Yeah. yeah. And he, looked, he looked good then, you know. Um, and, it, you know, he started to improve a bit when he came on. Uh, and, you know, the, the assist he did to, to Trossard for the disallowed third goal was just beautiful, you know, like that. And he just really just sets up these great plays and everything. And it's just, he's so good. He's so good. Yeah, um, for sure. A player that if he does carry on uh, and he goes on for another maybe season and a half, I think we could see him going on for serious money. Uh, yeah, I, I worry about losing him, admittedly. I do worry I mean, about that. if if it's £20 million pounds more than what Ben White went for, then we're, uh, I don't know, how can we... <laughs> Uh, reject ben who? I don't know Ben. I don't know. Ben. No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Chloe, what do you think? How far? Or let me rephrase that. How far can, do you think Tarek Lamptey can go? I mean, I, I don't career. think there's any reason he can't go right to the top. He is just a phenomenal player. He's still young. I hope his injuries are behind him now. Um, mm. But like last season, before he got injured, he was like comfortably probably our best player. And this season, he's he's looked like he hasn't been out. You know, he hasn't really. He's coming back to fitness, but watching him play, his his performances are at the same level that they were before he got injured, which is quite unusual. I think sometimes it takes players quite a lot of time to readjust. I guess. Yeah. Um. 
yeah he's just he's he's so rapid for a start um mm. and he's he's just seems to sort of see things see like balls and he makes very good run-ins um yeah and i think he, i think he is a very good player and i think yeah there's no reason he can't he can't you know be yeah the, the, the fact that he's or whatever the fact that he's come back so rapid and so much like the Tarek Lamptey we saw before he got injured. Obviously, I know a lot of fans like yourself, Curtis, were calling for him to come back. Why isn't he coming back? You know, we've seen him in training. What's happening? Yeah, I mean, I understand, that testament... I understand why they yeah, throw him in immediately. But, but I think, is that yeah. testament to our medical team? I know a lot of people slate our medical team. But is that testament to them that they've held him back to to prevent... I don't know if he comes on against Man City uh, like he did la uh, last week, and then pulls his hammy again um, because he's back two months early. I mean, I think you do actually see it at some clubs. Um, they bring back players because obviously they're important players, but they either don't perform as well as they can immediately, or they get re-injured. And I think it probably is better to protect these mm. players especially when they're young um, yeah so that they can come back at sort of full strength yeah definitely i think marcus rashford is a good example um yeah. he mm. didn't have a great time at the euros and for the last two seasons he's just not been that same player um and obviously he had a lengthy time out at the start of this season because he had surgery finally uh for something that he's been carrying for so long um and I'm sure you're going to see him come back to his best as well. Um, hopefully not against us. Uh, when have we got them? A couple of weeks' time? Um, yeah. Ronaldo's going to get pocketed. Don't worry about that. Shane <laughs> Duffy. Shane Duffy knows. <laughs> um, we'll talk about a guy who returned to Anfield. Um, obviously, last season, didn't get to say hello or goodbye to the fans again. Um, Adam Lalana. Um, I haven't got a graphic for this one. Sorry, Adam, if you're watching. Uh, probably not. Um, just put a picture uh, of a goat up. Just a picture of a goat. That's, yeah, that's true. No, <laughs> that's true. I don't even have a uh, graphic for a goat, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what a performance from him. I've got some stats here. Um, he had, I'm not sure how many shots he had, but he had 100% shot accuracy, 85% pass accuracy, 46 touches, 34 passes, two chances created, and one assist. Um, I mean, this guy, for me, oozes class and is by far the best player on the pitch when he plays for us. For what he does off the ball and the experience he brings uh, after you know winning a, a Premier League, winning a Champions League, I think he's so, so important. Um, and for me, would be the first name on the team sheet. Um, Curtis, what do, do you agree? I mean, yeah. I mean, when him and uh, Welbeck came to their club, I was like, oh my God, we're massive. This Adam Lallana, that's Danny Wilbert, that's amazing. Um, and I thought that um, it's sort of what we needed. I felt like we needed these older experienced guys to come in and help tighten things up. And uh, since Adam's come in, the midfield has been mostly pretty solid. Um, and yeah, just, I thought yesterday he had a great game, you know, and um, Alison, you know, saved a goal with his legs. Uh, that, yeah, such a shame because that would have gone nicely through there. Um, but yeah, I just think he's great. I always think he's fantastic. And, you know, he, um, it's a, it, you know, as we say, if uh, Basuma ends up going or what have you, I feel like he, he can, uh, he can do well with Enoch there in the midfield. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. Definitely. And you've seen, uh, obviously, what he means to the Liverpool fans, the reception he got. I think he was last off the pitch. Um, yeah, yesterday yeah. as well so yeah it's yeah, great really, a, lot of, really, a lot of respect it was nice to see yeah really good for him to you know finally uh get that send off from from Anfield yeah um Chloe Adam Lalana for you what you know how important is he for this team I think um he's really important in the experience he brings because I think whilst it's good to have lots of young talent which we do especially um under Potter we've Sort of brought in a lot more younger players. Um, I think you need someone who has, you know, as you said, won the Premier League. He he's just so sort of level-headed, I think, and 
probably just being around him helps a lot of our younger players because yeah. they see how you know he's a good role model as well and there is just the fact he's just a really good footballer as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've yeah, yeah, I thought his shot, you said his shot accuracy yesterday was 100%, which was good because that's one of the few things I think sometimes he's not that good at. He has some easy shots that mm. he places wide or over the bar. Um, but yeah. obviously that's not really his... Um, Forte. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he yeah. So I think... much else to the team that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, maybe with the experienced head he's got, maybe fans expect him to pitch in a little bit more with the goals. I think he only got one last season. I don't think. Yeah, it was the West Ham was... game, wasn't it? I think or something. Like um, Leicester, I think. Oh, the Leicester. Oh, right. Yeah, That's and then we went on and and lost two one, I think, in the last seconds with. Ian Acho scoring. Of course we did, yeah. yeah. Oh, or no, yeah. it was Armati, sorry. Um, so yeah, um, just going on to what's coming up. Obviously, we've got Newcastle at the Amex. Um, first time we we're facing them since their uh, multi-billion pound takeover. Um, obviously, they haven't had the chance to bring in uh, any more quality yet. Uh, and I don't think they've even replaced Steve Bruce yet. Um, so... Curtis, are we facing them at the best time possible? I would say so, yeah. I, I mean, um, Newcastle is... <laughs> that that job is a bit of a poison chalice, in my opinion, because um, their fans have such a high expectation of what they think they're, they, they are owed and what they deserve because of how successful they were 15, 20 years ago or something stupid like that. And it's like, you're not owed anything. You don't deserve this we're all in the same league, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I genuinely think that, you know, we could probably do a good good job against them, you know, when we play them next. I'd like to think so anyway. So. Yeah, I think we're, we're yet to thump someone this season and I, I've got a really good yeah. feeling about this one. Chloe, score prediction, what do you think? Oh, um, I'm going to 3-0. We beat good. them 3-0 hmm. twice last year, didn't we? We did. Um, yeah, we did. Mm. So, why not third time in a row? 3-0. <laughs> three, a 3-0 three hat-trick from Chloe. Curtis, what do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, go on then. 3-0, yeah. 3-0, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I feel pressured now to say 3-0. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go one better, guys. I'm going to go 4-0. Uh, oh. And I'm going to go oh, with nice. a, a Leandro Trossard hat-trick. Uh, <laughs> or a Neil Mopé hat-trick would just... Yeah, that would be nice, um, especially um, given that I think he's one of the many, 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 many names that has been linked. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure how credible these are because they're being linked to bloody Kylian Mbappe, for God's sake. Yeah. Um, Newcastle don't want Neil. He's, he's terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> terrible. No, no, but I, I just think Neil's such a confidence player and giving him a goal, mm. I think would just really set him off on a good path. You know? Yeah, especially after being dropped um, for the trip to Anfield. Um, I feel like he he needs his home comforts and um, I'm certainly hoping that that can uh, obviously bring out a goal. Uh, I'm sure, Chloe, you th you think that as well. We we I think everyone knows what you think of Neil Morpé. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> um, it's quite well renowned. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> thanks for that, guys. It was a really good episode. Um, obviously, as I say, the first episode of the New Look Albion Obsessed. Um, if you want to follow these guys, Chloe, what's your Twitter? British tea hater. Okay. And Curtis? It's Curtis Friend. Um, that's my real name. It's not some stupid username. And to plug something else, if I could plug my Twitch. Yeah, go for it, mate. Twitch.tv forward slash the L Dude Brothers with two S's. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, follow them up. Um, get some discussions going. Obviously, if you want to follow us, um, it's up in the top right-hand corner. I'll be an obsessed across all social medias. Um, and we'll let the outro play. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.